morning we sang all kinds of songs that were more high. So my voice already seems tired. But uh, um, it was good, good worship so far this morning. We're continuing worship, and it's good to see some new faces. It's good to see some old faces that have been away for a while. And uh, you know, as a church, we can tell when a church starts to grow up, a congregation starts to grow up, because we have babies. We have two babies this morning. So our congregation, and you might want to be thinking about this, how you might want to volunteer, but we may need to start thinking about the nursery pretty soon. Um, right now, they seem to be okay, but uh, but uh, uh, especially little Tamar, she's, she'll, she'll be quiet for a while, but um, there's going to be a time when we're going to have to start to, to really think about nursery, and that's a good thing. Um, so uh, just, uh, just just get you praying about that, thinking about that, and uh, it's just exciting to have children that little in our congregation. We have some newer youth that are in our congregation now, and we want to welcome them too, because uh, the grade sevens are now part of... Uh, our worship time too. They were in the children's worship up to this point, and we just want to welcome you guys here this morning. And if you're visiting with us, of course, we want to welcome you here this morning to our our worship. Uh, the message that we're going to be looking at this morning is found in Ephesians chapter six, and we're going to be looking at verses ten through twenty this morning. And you'll find that in this passage, this passage we already read uh, with, through our worship time already this morning. But um, it is, it's a great passage that we're going to be considering. Um, and it's something I think that we should all be, be looking at uh, to, to, as we enter into our daily lives with Christ. You know, do, you ever, do you ever think that you're in a battle as a Christian? You know, I know there's times in my life that I feel like I'm struggling, that things are just getting against me. And as Christians, do you ever feel like you are? But it's not a battle against the flesh, like against governments or your neighbors or against uh, a problem. You know, TV or or all these things that we sometimes get caught up in. You know, those that's not the battle that we're talking about this morning. We are in a battle that is of spiritual nature. And if we look, turn over quickly to Second Corinthians chapter ten. Oops, going the wrong direction for me. I should, you know, I think it's pastor. I should know the Bible, but uh, obviously I was going the wrong direction there. But Second Corinthians chapter ten, in verses three and four, we read this. For although we are walking in the flesh, we do not wage war in a fleshly way. So in other words, we're not battling in a fleshly way, like uh, against each other with fists and things like that. Since we are, since the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but are powerful through God for the demolish of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every high mind thing that goes on to say in the next verses. So in other words, we're not, we're, our battle is not necessarily in the flesh. It's not a thing that we're fighting against the world. We're not fighting against um, uh, the things of the, in, in the world. You know, there are things that we get concerned about uh, socially and, and, uh, and so forth that we need to, to stand up for. But our battle, our main battle, is not found in there. Our battle is in a different world, in a different, different level. Our battle in this world is in the, in the spiritual. Here how Peter saw it in 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, we read this, he says, Be sober, be on the alert. Your adversary the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the, in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brothers in the world. So in other words, he's telling us that our battle that we're fighting against, the things that we're struggling against, the main thing is that Satan, the devil, is running around like a roaring lion, seeing who we might devour. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. What are we to do then? How do we fight what seems to be invisible? Or what must we do to protect ourselves? Well, the answer is found really in our text this morning. And Peter, or me, Paul, in his writing to the Ephesians, saw that this, they were facing the same kind of struggle. And that's what we're going to try to get our answer this, this morning from. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning that we can come before you. We can come and bow and ask for your help and ask for your guidance. Lord, I pray that as we continue to worship now as we study your word, I pray that you just give us insight and clear, a clear understanding of what you will have us learn. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit's anointing this morning upon me. Give me the words to speak that I might be able to share with your people what they need to hear. And I pray for these things now in your son's holy and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So this morning, as we're going to walk through this passage or this, this text, usually I have, you know, lately I've had like three points. It seems like every week I've had three points. But let's wait for to try to walk through this passage and look through, look at it as we as we go. So we're going to begin to look at verses 10 through 13. It says, finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. So be strengthened by yourself is not what it says, right? Be strengthened by the Lord, it's telling us. Be strengthened by God, right? Be strengthened, use him, use him for your strength. So often, even as believers in Jesus Christ, we get caught up and we think that we have to do it ourselves. We have to, to go it alone. And that's not the reality. It's be strengthened in the Lord, Paul tells uh, the Ephesians. And by his vast strength. So in other words, there's no limit to what he can do for you. There's no limit to the strength that he can provide for you. You know, we're going to face all kinds of struggles, all kinds of battles in, in the spiritual realm and all kinds of areas like that, in the flesh, in our, in our weakness of, of uh, for sin, and so forth. But why do we try to face it alone and on our own strength? We don't need to. We don't need to go alone. We just need to turn to God and be strengthened by the Lord and by His unlimited, His vast strength. So, so quit trying to do it by yourself. That's what they say. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Now, the word tactics, we can take and we can look at it. It can mean um, tricks. It can mean uh, plans. It can mean schemes. All those kinds of ideas. So in other words, you know, if you want to be able to face the struggle, if you want to face the battle, you need to be prepared. You need to get on God's full armor, not just a portion of it, not just a piece of it, not just take a sword, not just take the helmet, but all His full armor. We need to be fully prepared. You know, when I worked with the soldiers a lot for a year and a half over this last year, or before a coming year, you know, one of the things I noticed about soldiers is, and they're very different than sailors, because sailors, you know, they're, they're very goosey-goosey, very relaxed, kind of laid-back kind of guys. But soldiers, not at all. My nephew was a, was a member of the number two, uh, Prince Patricia Light Infantry. And they are prepared. In their, in their office, in their space that they're working for, getting ready to go, they, they're in their fatigues already, for starters. They're ready for war. And in their, in their, usually in their locker, in their office uh, area, is their, is their Kevlar helmet, is their Kevlar uh, breastplate, and uh, their, their battle gear, their... Um, their backpack, so to speak, is ready to go, it's packed, it has everything prepared, so that even if in the event of rain or in the event of cold, they can get up and they can get going. And in fact, and not only that, their weapon is ready also. It's clean, it's, it's oiled, it's ready to go. So they're able to stand up, load, and put their helmet on, put their breastplate on, put their, put their boots on, and they're ready to run into the battle, no matter what time of day, no matter when, they're called upon. As Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to have the full armor of God so that we're ready to stand. So that we can set so that we can stand against the tactics of the devil. So in other words, we can stand against whatever God, whatever Satan and, and, and his demons can throw against us. There's nothing that he has, no tactic, no scheme, no anything that he can think of that we can't stand against if we have God's full armor put on. That's encouraging to me, as it, it, it should be to you, because we have no fear then. We shouldn't be fear, we should have no fear of what is in this world at all. So it goes on in verse 12, it says, For the battle is not against flesh and blood, as we said, so it's not against governments, it's not against uh, people, it's not against our brothers or sisters in Christ, it's not against anything else, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this of this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the, in the heavens. Now, this is an interesting little passage here. What is he talking about? Now, I just said not against governments, not against people, but then in the turn, when you read this, it almost sounds like what he's talking about. Now, as you read in some of the um, commentaries, what they suggest here is that what, the battle that we're battling, the people that they're talking about here, is a different level that, that the devil or Satan has for us. Now, I'm going to ask you a question here this morning. How many of you believe that there's, there's Satan out there? I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you to put your hands up. 
to your faith. How, you don't think about that for a moment. And you know the reality, I would have to say, is the reason that most of us don't believe in a literal devil or a Satan or whatever we want to Lucifer, whatever word we might use throughout history, there's been different terms. I'll tell you why that most of us don't believe in it before we go much further. It's because we haven't experienced it. We haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. And, and, and part of the reason is, is because, why? Because we're not a threat. Who do we battle against? When we play hockey, these guys, the boys are playing floor hockey, not really floor, I guess it's floor hockey, but it's outside this, this weekend. And if you want to go, they play at 2 o'clock this afternoon, you can ask uh, them where they are and go and cheer them on this afternoon. But uh, you always key on the one who's, gonna, who's really good. So when you're a team, you, you key on the good players, right? So that they don't score. And the reality is, as believers in Jesus Christ, if we have no, if we're no threat, if we're not reading God's word, if we're not praying, if we're not worshiping, if we're not spending time with God, we're no threat. They would leave us alone. Now typically, if I was to play hockey with the guys this afternoon, they would leave me alone. Because I'm no threat. At one time, maybe I could have been a threat. When I was 20 years younger, and I was 175 pounds, and I could run and run and run and run and not seem to grow tired or weary. I wasn't a threat. I was a threat then, and then maybe they would key on me. I wasn't really a scorer. I've always been a defenseman when I play hockey. But but uh, but the reality is, today they would leave me alone because I just you know look at me. There's no reason to bother this guy. You have to put him in net and he takes the net up. So it's not a problem. So you see, the understanding is here is that if if you don't believe in Satan, if you don't believe that there's real really spiritual world out there, probably the real reality is. Is that you're not spending time in God's word, you're not becoming a threat to, to Satan. So, because they don't, the, the, the other side, the enemy, leaves alone those that are no threat to them. They're not going to bother, they just need to bother with them. So, in here though, we, what we're seeing here is really when he talks about authorities, when he's talking about powers, when he's talking about spiritual forces, um, the way the commentaries would break this down is they would say that these people, what he's talking about is the different layers, different levels of. of of the demonic side's power. So what we find here is those, the level that maybe deals with the individual, the level that deals with, with the, um, uh, the, the, the nation, so to speak, and then the ones that would deal with the world. That's what we're talking about when we look at the different powers, the different levels, the powers, the authorities, and so forth. And if you, if you do a little more reading and, and so forth, I would, what I would encourage you to do it's just a look, you'll get a better understanding of what, of what he's talking about here. But just be just be aware that Satan's pretty well organized, in other words. The, de the, de the devil's well organized. He knows the individuals he needs to deal with. He knows the cities he needs to deal with. He knows the nations he needs to deal with. And he knows the world, how he needs to deal with the world. And he's, he's, he's got himself organized. Don't be foolish to think that he's not uh, ready to go and ready to do battle. This is why, in verse 13, you must... Take up the full armor of God. So it's pretty plain and simple. He's being pretty, pretty, pretty forward here. He's well organized. This is why you need to take up the full armor of God. So that you may be able to resist in the evil day and have prepared everything to take your stand. So here, if you key on, if you underline a word, one word in this passage, in this, in this text this morning, if you underline stand, you'll see that it's important to be ready. Because the stand we see in verse uh, 11, so it says, so that you can stand. In verse uh, 13 it says, take your stand. And then as we go into verse 14 it says, stand therefore. So in other words, we need to be prepared. So the, it's an idea of being ready to stand against the foe. Being ready to defeat, to, to, to defeat whatever comes at you. Defeat and stand against whatever might be thrown towards you. Now, when, I, when you think about it, you know that when you're, when uh, if you're in playing sports, or you're doing whatever you're doing, you're not in, you're not ready to go. When I, if you're just sort of laying back on the easy boy chair, you know, when I watch football, I make sure I get the chair that I can pull up the legs and just relax. So I'm not ready to go play football. I'm just ready to watch football. So you know, it's different. Now, when I'm ready, when I'm playing football, when I play football, there's two different kinds of players. There's guys that are sitting on the bench. And there's the guys that are standing on the, on the sideline. So the guys, who do you think is the guys that are ready really to, to enter into the game? It's 
It's not the guys that are sitting on the bench. Because they're not even really into it. They're not even really interested. It's the guys standing on the sideline, ready with their helmet in hand, or even on, and ready to get into the field. Lots of times when I, you know, when I, I wasn't a first string player, you know, you'd put your helmet away somewhere because you know you weren't playing for that quarter or half, and you'd be sitting back and you'd be relaxed. You weren't ready to play. We weren't ready to go in. And then you see the guy goes into panic, that all of a sudden the other guy, the first string guy, gets hurt, and he goes into panic because he's not prepared to get into on the field. He can't find his helmet. He's not ready. He's not, you know, he's not ready. He's not worn it up. He's not, he's not prepared to go into battle. You and I, as believers in Christ, need to be ready and we need to stand and be ready to enter into the battle. So when we sit back and we relax and we don't read God's word, we don't spend time in his in his in his uh, in, in time in prayer with him and so forth, we're not we're just sort of lounging and we're not ready to enter the battle. And then this goes go to verse 14. So stand therefore with the truth of the belt, with, with truth like a belt around your waist. So first off, we need to have the truth of God. What is the truth of God? Well, it's his word, isn't it? But it's also Jesus Christ. In the old armor that they used to look at in, in the Roman times or any time, the belt was what kept everything together. It's a, as soon as you left your belt off, you were ready to go. Now, in other pictures and other commentaries suggest that it says, uh, if you look at some passages and some versions, it says, gird up your loins with the belt of truth. So in other words, get, gather up all that loose fabric and everything that you're, that's hanging down below your waist so that you're ready to run and ready to be able to get into the battle. So get that belt on and get ready to go. Get ready to have that, have that truth and know the truth of God and know who He is. And then it goes on and says, and uh, righteousness like armor on your chest. So in other words, we need to be to know God's righteousness. Now we have, in order to have true strength and true protection, we have to know God's righteousness, not our own self-righteousness. Because my self-righteousness is like filthy rags. It's not worth it. It's not worth anything. It's no protection. So we need God's righteousness. His justice. His, his, his being how just He is. How righteous He is. How truthful He is. And then it goes on. It says, and, and, and your feet sandaled with the readiness of the, for the gospel of peace. So in other words, we need to, to get our feet, our shoes on. Now one of the things a soldier gets ready when he or even a sailor, when you get into your at night, when you get to go to bed at night, and now I know we're talking a lot about army and so forth, but just bear with me because it's a good picture. But we, when we get ready and get into our rack to sleep at night as a sailor, we get our boots ready. We're ready to jump into them so that we're ready to go. Now, a soldier, often, lots of soldiers will sleep with their boots on. So that if there's a call, if there's a, a call comes up, they can get up and get home quickly. Now, sometimes that's not wise because there's other reasons that you need your feet to have to dry out and so forth. That's not important here. But we need sandals on. Can you imagine trying to go into the battle without the basis of our of, 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 uh, of, uh, uh, something to protect our feet? Think about it for a moment when you're running across the field and if you try to go out into the, into the gravel or something and you're barefoot, it doesn't work very good. You're, you're distracted. So put on the sandals. Put on. Your, put up. Put your, Make sure your feet have something on them. And what he's talking about here is readiness for the gospel peace. So in other words, we're going out with, and we're ready to share at, 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 a, at a drop of a hat the gospel of peace. And then verse sixty, it goes on. It says, in every situation, take a shield of faith. Now faith is so important. Now faith is just not simply believing. Faith is trusting and completely. Um, putting our whole heart into what we believe God can do for us. <clears throat> the faith, the shield, they're often talking that this pastor likely is talking about would maybe be the, would like to cover the whole person. So that's what, I, what, what we need to go into the battle. Knowing that we can trust God completely to care for us, to take, take care of us, to shield us from anything that might be hurled against us. And listen to the second half of verse 16. And with it, you'll be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. So in other words, nothing that Satan's going to throw at you, if you can put your total trust in our Lord and Savior and in God, there's nothing that Satan can throw at you that can hurt you. 
It's our shield. God will take care of you. There's a great, great song, a like great song, a great old hymn. God will take care of you through everything. I can't think of all the words because I'm, I'm getting old too. It's as old as it's older than me. But I, but you know, it's it's God will take care of you through every woe and through everything that we might come might come against us if we trust in Him. And then verse 17, it says, "Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word." The helmet of salvation. Now I thought about this and the, the idea, and some some of the commentaries suggest that it's like we're saying that we need God to protect our mind also. You know what I find with Satan and the, and the devil? Same person. You know, like whatever one you want, however you want to use it, is that he's quick to try to convince us today that we're worthless. That we have no hope. That we have no direction. But you know what? When we put on God, the helmet that God has protected us, the helmet of salvation, we know that we have hope. We know that we're loved. We know that we have direction in our lives because we, we have God on our side. We need to protect our minds from God, from, from what, the, what Satan might throw at us. And then, like any soldier, we need to have our weapons ready. Now, as a chaplain, as a non-combatant in the military, we don't carry weapons. We're given helmets, we're given Kevlar helmets and Kevlar plating for our, our chest and our back to protect us. We're given all the other, everything else the soldiers give given. Good footing, good footwear, we're given uh, good uniforms, we're given all those kinds of things that we need to be able to survive in the field. But you know what we're not, we're not given? We're not given a weapon to carry. Because we're not combatants. But I want you to understand, as believers in Jesus Christ, you are combatant in this world against the, against the, the devil against the spiritual things of this world. And we need to carry with us our weapon. What is our weapon? It says here, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's Word is what will protect you and give you the strength to be able to, 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 to fight against God, against Satan. What did Jesus do when he was tempted? Every time that Jesus was tempted when he was in the wilderness, what did he do? He quoted from God's Word. We need to know His Word. Now often, you know, the Satan will say, well, you're too tired to read. You're too old. You're, you're too busy to take time to read that, that, that book. You're too, you're too, uh, you're not smart enough. You're not, you don't have enough background. You're not, you don't have the Master of Divinity or you don't have a Bachelor's of Religion or whatever you might have. You know what? The reality is no matter what you, the, what, what you might be trying, people might tell you, every one of us need to be in God's Word so we know what it says so that we have that, that weapon that can fight against the evil of this world. And then he goes on in verse 18, he says, With every prayer and request, pray that at all times in the Spirit, and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. So in other words, we have in verse 18, another weapon too, and that is prayer. You and I need to be in prayer and spend time in prayer with God. What is prayer? Well, the youth I know today are going to be learning what prayer is. Prayer is a conversation with God. It's that simple. You don't need to know these and thous and thouest and this and, and all those, those old English words. You don't need to know what seems some people think are, are expected, what is expected of you to say. You need to simply have a conversation with God. That's what prayer is. If you want to be to have protection, if you want to know that that God's on your side, if you want to know that He that He's there to take care of you, talk to Him. Spend time with Him. Now, in one uh, sense, the whole and armor of God is like the picture of Jesus Christ, isn't it? Christ is the truth. If you go to John chapter fourteen, verse sixteen, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And He is our righteousness. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it talks about how He is our righteousness. And then in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, we learn that He's our peace. And in Galatians 2.20, it says His faithfulness makes it possible for our faith. In Luke chapter 2, verse 30, He's our salvation. And John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14, tells us that who? That Jesus is the Word. 
So in other words, when we put on the full armor of God, we're taking on the full presence of Christ in our life. You and I need to know who He is. We, it means that when we trust Christ, we receive the armor. Now, in Warren Wiersbe's uh, Be Rich, he explains this a little bit further. And it's just a great picture that to realize that when we come to Christ, we, um, when we come, allow Him to come into our lives, we're putting on the armor of God. And we need to trust Him. Verse 19 and 20 is just a good reminder that Paul even says, Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth, my, my mouth to, the, to make known with boldness the mysteries of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough uh, in him to speak as I should. So in other words, Paul even realized that he needed to put on the armor of God. This great man of faith, this great saint in our, of, of, of our history, of Christian history, understood that he needed the same strength as Christ did, or as, as we all did rather do. Pray that he might have boldness, and so he can speak as he should. This is when Paul's already in chains, it says here. So in other words, he's locked up together with some other, with uh, two other Roman soldiers on each side. We don't need to be afraid. God is in control. We don't need to we, we do need, though, to be prepared to face whatever Satan might throw at us. Three things must be understood this morning, then. We must acknowledge that we are in a fight. We must know who we are fighting. And we must be ready to fight the good fight. And if I were to throw a fourth one is, be ready to support each other also. You're not in this battle alone. We have Christ but we should also have the brothers and sisters of, the, of, of, uh, of our faith. God, through Jesus Christ, won the victory over death and sin, but now Satan doesn't want the world to believe it. He will do what he can to dis discredit us, to hurt us, to destroy our testimonies. Are you prepared to battle? Are you ready to stand against the foe. I challenge you to think about it, to pray about it, to get yourself set so that you're always prepared, so that no matter what might be thrown at you, you can face those struggles. Let's pray. And the Father, we just thank you again, Father, for the opportunity that we've had to look at your word this morning. Now, Lord, as we look into look at the celebrating the Lord's Supper together, I pray that you just guide us through this time. I pray that each one of us will have our hearts prepared and ready for, for what we are about to receive this morning. Help us to, to not take it lightly. And Lord, I pray that our hearts and our, would be examined, that our sin we be we confess our sins to you this morning. So that too, we wouldn't take unworthily. I pray for these things now in your son's precious name. Amen. Sweet. Just in case you're wondering, that's Stefan. And he actually has pretty much everything on that we were talking about this morning. And I would say in his right hand is the word of God, and in his left is prayer. I'll go with that, he said. But he has everything on that God has required for us to be ready.